Today we're going to give a brief overview of the thermodynamics of humans with focus on what's called free energy or available energy and how this term originated in the mathematics of the operation of the steam engine and where this free energy comes from in the corpus of human existence. The following diagram shows the basics of the thermodynamics of reproduction, the central process of human existence. The graph, called the reaction coordinate, plots the Gibbs free energy, otherwise known as available energy, of the human chemical reaction plotted against time in years, otherwise known as the extent of the reaction. The start of the reaction is what is called the initial state, which shows two unattached reactants, or single humans, at their instance of first meeting. The end of the reaction is what is called the final state, showing the same two people attached in a relationship with an attached child in the formation of a family. The final state is quantified thermodynamically by the time at which the differential of free energy is equal to zero, meaning that the value of free energy is neither increasing nor decreasing, and the relationship or reaction has stopped evolving, or in other words, is a dead relationship. Statistically, 85% of people will go through this chemical reaction process. E sub A is what is called the activation energy, the energy barrier or hurdle the pair must surmount before sinking into the confines of a stable relationship, which consists in large part of family and social barriers to the acceptance of the relationship. Delta G is the symbol for Gibbs free energy change, which is the difference between the free energy of the state of the family at the final state and the free energy of the unattached pair at the initial state, which signifies the work energy released from the relationship over time. The Gibbs free energy itself is a function of internal energy, pressure volume energy, and entropic energy. The single reactants, A and B, and the family unit, ABC, are each single molecules, respectively. The bonding symbol refers to a chemical bond, the attachment force of the relationship which is comprised primarily of the electromagnetic force and residual aspects of the gravitational force. The important point to note here is that free energy, or available energy, is a type of energy that is released from a change in the configuration of the relationship bonds between the reactants and products, or people in their initial state configurations, as differing several years down the road from their final state configuration. This point frequently gets confused. To exemplify, in 1921, English biologist James Johnstone, in applying thermodynamics to biological animals and plants, argued that free energy or available energy simply is the caloric content of one's diet, arguing to the effect that free energy content of intake food is high, whereas the free energy content of excrements is low, and that the difference between the two is what goes into the work of muscles. Food intake, however, is the dominant factor of activation energy, signifying that one is generally healthy or unhealthy, depending on diet. Food, in a technical sense, is a surface or catalyst factor that facilitates human chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy barrier to reaction if one looks healthy, or conversely, raising the activation energy barrier if one is overweight. In other words, in simple terms, the force of new love between two people, quantified by Gibbs free energy release, will be about the same whether one is eating potato chips or avocados. A healthy diet will only help to facilitate one's reactions to others, whereas the pairings of different people and reactions is what determines the differences in free energies or available energies. Another example of error as to what constitutes free energy is found in Romanian mathematician Nicholas Georgisu Rosian's famous 1971 The Entropy Law and the Economic Process, in which he attributes free energy to the energy stored and then released in carbon fuels that power civilization. Rosian even goes so far as to incorrectly pose it a fourth law of thermodynamics, arguing to the effect that material entropy, what he considered to be bound energy, tends to a maximum, which is based on an incorrect understanding of both entropy and free energy. All in all, the central reason why free energy gets frequently confused is that it is not at all obvious how, why, and where this puzzling quantity called free or available energy is found and derived from the steam engine. To quickly explain where this free energy is located in the steam engine, in 1850 German engineer Otto von Guerich invented the piston and cylinder, consisting of a cylinder inside of which a piston with a handle could be greased and then fit into the cylinder. In this manner, differences in pressure of the air of the volume of the enclosed cylinder could be obtained, such as if one pushed or pulled on the handle of the piston. Next, Guerich invented the vacuum pump, 
a device in which a crank arm could be pumped, causing the air to be sucked out of an attached spherical bulb. Once enough cranks of the arm were made by a strong man, a relative vacuum was made inside of the bulb. The bulb can then be stoppered with a cork and then carried about, sort of like a portable vacuum or vacuum into space. Four years later, in 1854, Gurick demonstrated to everyone the power of the vacuum, whereby he showed that if he attached the vacuumed out bulb to the opening valve of a standard piston and cylinder, shown by symbol X at the side of the cylinder, the piston itself being attached to a load of weight in need of lifting, that by way of a simple twist of the valve connecting the vacuum to the piston cylinder, that the unoccupied space or volume of the vacuum had the power to draw out the air molecules of the piston, thus lowering the head of the piston and raising the weight. This was a hugely popular demonstration, showing in effect that a vacuum had a significant amount of horsepower or work associated with it. Skipping over a few steps in engine development, in 1690, French engineer Denis Papin drafted the first outline on how to make a steam engine, theoretically based on Gurek's vacuum principles, in which he conceived the view that using a water-filled piston and cylinder alternately heated and cooled by fire and then cold water, respectively, placed on the exterior of the cylinder, that this process would act to create a new vacuum each time the cylinder was cooled, whereby the water would contract suddenly. Over the next hundred years, Papin's engine design led to the development of the Watt engine, the standard steam engine developed by Scottish engineer James Watt, consisting of various additions, such as a planet gear, a centrifugal governor, an indicator diagram, among others. By 1824, near to a dozen different steam engine designs were in operation, and that year, French engineer Sadi Carnot set out to outline the basic physical principles to all heat engines, and in doing so instilled the now famous Carnot engine model of thermodynamics, in which all generic heat engines are comprised of three parts, the hot body or heat releasing body, the cold body or heat absorbing body, the working body or volume expanding and contracting body, a model which in principle and practice is found to apply to all bodies of the universe, human bodies included. Skipping over a few steps of thermodynamic theory development, in 1876 American engineer Willard Gibbs extended the basic model of Carnot in which a hot body and cold body act to produce work through the medium of a third working body to include those processes in which chemical reactions are taking place in the working body and those processes in which new chemicals are crossing the boundary of the working body. In other words, to exemplify, in principle, one could throw several hundred mutually reactive molecules into the cylinder, be it various hydrocarbon molecules or various human molecules, i.e. people, spark the reaction, and then measure the volume change in the piston as this volume changes or vacuum space changes are converted into useful work external to the system, namely any and all types of work that can be coupled to the arm of the piston. When the reactions stop, we say that the free energy or chemical potential of the reacting system has reached its minimum as the, and is thus at equilibrium. Applying this model to any given surface section of the surface of the earth, we see that by direct extrapolation that any given work producing society in the course of one day of the heating of the sun acts the part of the Carnot heat engine cycle in which a boundary system or volume of humans contained in a society is heated or sparked into daily reaction, doing a certain measurable amount of pressure volume work quantified by changes in the occupational work of the human chemical bonds, and then, as the sun recedes, contracts in volume, all of which is quantified by a measurable change in the Gibbs free energy going between states of two different days, such that the overall change in the spontaneity of the working reactions of the system will occur in the direction of Gibbs free energy decrease. When this overall system free energy decrease criterion is applied to the case of individual relationships, we see that each relationship acts the part of an individual heat engine, as shown here where MX and FY are the symbols for male and female human molecules respectively, connected by way of a working human chemical bond, such that each person is reacting off the visualized mental hot aspects of each other and being cooled similarly by the proportional cool or cold aspects of each other which in some acts to drive the work of the relationship. The model that individual relationship free energies are additive 
summing to the total free energy change of the system is what is called free energy coupling, a theory developed based on measured experimental findings by German-born American biophysicist Fritz Lippmann in 1941 in a study of the phosphate bond energies. In other words, some individual relationships or reactions will show an increase in Gibbs free energy and our energy absorbing relationships, thus becoming less stable over time, whereas others will show a free energy decrease in our energy releasing relationships, becoming more stable over time. The sum of these individual free energy relationship changes are additive in such a way that the reactions are coupled to each other, thus acting to cause a Gibbs free energy decrease in the overall system and thus a perceptual system evolution change. In conclusion, free energy or available energy is not something that is based on one's diet or fossil fuels, but rather a function defined mathematically in chemical thermodynamics and explained in terms of the changes in chemical bondings of various possible pairings of humans or any molecules for that matter in relationships as those pairings and arrangement differ between the initial state and the final state of the reaction process. So you can run and tell that, run and tell that, run and tell that, oh boy, oh, oh, oh boy.